So one place where a hash can be used is to verify stuff, okay? So uh, I'm on the website of a particular type of software package, it's called MacTech, and I don't know why I keep using this example, but I do. You can find other examples like this. Um, so let's look at, at, at this. So this is a, something that I can download. This is a large download. You'll see this is actually a four gigabyte download. I'm not gonna do that download right now, um, but what I want you to notice here is after this download link, you see these three pieces of information. This is an MD5 sum, a SHA-256 sum, a SHA-512 sum. These are hash values, okay? And the idea is that this is a hash value using a different type of hash algorithm. So there are different hash algorithms that will produce different hash codes for this file. And so here's how I would use this. I would download this file, and then what I would do is I would compute the hash value of the file uh, using a program that uh, I can I can use that comes installed on my computer. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, and then you know what I would do is I would uh, I would compare that value with the value that's provided here to make sure that I had downloaded the file properly. And you know like some random little gremlins didn't get into the connection and flip around a few of the bits or something like that, leaving me with a corrupted file. Uh, all right, so let me uh, switch over here to a different view so that I can actually show you uh, how to do this. Um, so, so I've got my terminal here, and I've got all sorts of stuff in here. I have like a picture of Choo Choo, um, you know, for example. Uh, make sure there's nothing. Yeah, this is all fine. Um, so, so let's actually uh, do, compute the hash function. So I can open this picture of Choo Choo uh, for you guys to, to look at. It's a famous photo of Choo Choo. Um, and... And that's, you know, this file is about, you know, 62 kilobytes. Um, but let's compute the hash uh, of that file. And I'm going to use this program called MD5. Uh, and I'm going to pass in ChuChu. I'm going to give it that file name. And you'll see it produces a hash value. This is the hash value for that file. If I change the file, then what's going to happen is the hash value is going to change. Um, let's compute uh, the hash uh, value for a different file here. So let's use, uh, let's see here. Um, let's use this. I don't even know what this is. Uh, this looks interesting though. So let's do MD5 kid. Okay. And now you'll see I have a different hash value for this different file. Let's uh, do this for this file down here that has Chinese characters in it, which I think is interesting. I don't even know what this is again. Uh, okay. Um, and I'll do MD5. Oop. And you'll see that uh, it can, you know, can compute the, the hash of any file. And so the idea is that, um, and, and now let's see here. So let's do uh, MD5 homework.java, you know, um, some Java code here. I compute the, the hash of this. So one thing you're seeing is that every file produces a hash output for this particular hash algorithm that's the same size. Um, and that's really important. These files are all very different sizes. Some of them are big, some of them are small but I'm able to produce a fixed size output. And so if I was, and you'll see, uh, if I go back to the website here, that MD5 is one of the options that I have here for computing the hash of this particular file. So if I downloaded this file and I really wanted to make sure I had the right file, I could compute the MD5 sum and compare it with this value to make sure that I got the right bytes. So that's one of many possible uses of hash, uh, hash functions. Uh, we'll look at a few more together uh, in the next few videos.